Pero ¿qué es lo que significa? Si es mantener idioma, si es genética, si es una identidad. Eh, que tiene una persona, una familia, una comunidad. Entonces, eh, porque puede haber una persona que tiene un, un poco de, tiene un conocimiento sobre cómo construir un bohío, pero como decimos, dijimos anteriormente, sin ninguna conciencia. Eh, entonces, está el factor de identidad personal, está el factor de conocimiento cotidiano de las cosas, está el factor de comunidad, está el factor de familia, ¿no? no es una cosa una persona que dice yo soy tal y tal, pero su familia no tiene ningún, ni, ningún vínculo con eso. No es que no lo sea, sino simplemente que la familia no lo tiene, pero si la familia en general tiene esa identidad, ya es un poco más contundente, ¿no? es, un, es un factor mayor de esa indigenidad. Eh, entonces, eso lo, ¿cómo, ¿cómo analizar eso? ¿Cómo ver eh, cuánto hay? ¿no? Si se compenetra la genética con la costumbre, con la identidad, en un lugar donde se ve una, una variante fuerte de, de, de genética taína, entonces eh, se corresponde con lugares donde hay identidad, donde hay más, más modo de vida. Sería interesante, ¿no?, ver esas correspondencias. Eso es lo que más o menos... Entonces, eso, eso es interesante. Yo eh, no, no, no me gusta mucho tirar mi, vaya, mi propia situación. Yo me identifico, pero a, a un nivel más eh, desconectado y hasta cierto punto, pero de una base de herencia. Pero eh, cuando llegamos a, a, a la gente de Panchito Ramírez Rojas, en la montaña, hay una comunidad constante, diaria, cotidiana, eh, hay eh, carácter, personalidad de comunidad. Entonces, eh, me gusta no separarlo, pero por lo menos no, no mezclar todo eso, porque verdaderamente que eso tiene un mérito especial, en el sentido de que, bueno, es otro tipo de, de fenómeno cuando hay una comunidad, cuando hay una descendencia de ese mismo tronco de casi 2.000 personas. 2.000 personas no es una familia extensa, 2.000 personas es una tribu. ¿no? de la misma gente, no todo, hicimos una, un censo familiar, nos sentábamos ahí con los ancianos, di, 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 persona por persona, nombre por nombre, hijos, nietos, gente viva, está viva hoy. ¿Se comunican entre ellos? Es bastante, bastante, pero hay lugares donde no, y hay problemas de, de matrimonios muy cercanos ¿no? que, que están causando problemas porque la gente ya no... En Cuba no hay mucha facilidad de viaje. El Caney, Niquero, Caridad de los Indios, Guantánamo, todas esa, esa, esas diferentes pequeñas comunidades que nunca tienen buena manera de reunirse. Des, eh, otra cosa, un poquito fuera del tema, pero eh, proponer, a, como habló Juan Manuel, de hacer eventos en las islas, hacer eventos en situ también, no, no solamente aquí en Washington. Se ha hecho aquí porque por la facilidad que tiene la cosa por el momento, pero de, definidamente tenemos que caer en República Dominicana, en Cuba, en Haití, eh, en Puerto Rico, ¿no? Entonces, ¿cómo hacer eso? Porque llevar este debate, llevar esta discusión a diferentes lugares sería, sería bien fuerte. What lends to quotients of indigeneity? Um, so these are just very, very broad categories. Because the debate gets reduced very quickly to genetic lines or, you know, The, 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 the examples that Panchito's community best you know, identifies, you know, an ongoing sustained community that self-identifies as that has cultural practices. Now that's the best case scenario in terms of the whole, the whole deal, if you will. Uh, if we're talking about indigeneity, we're looking at a wider subject that should be looked at holistically and it needs a broad spectrum. And so that kind of quotient identity is what this group is working with because You know, not everybody's going to be identifying as indigenous, and I'm not here to convert anybody to Indians, quote unquote. You know, but some people will be happy on just understanding a little bit more about their ancestors and having a, maybe that much more respect about the world around them as a result of the exhibition. So when you're talking about indigeneity, that that's where it plays into is that they understand, and uh, I like the the example from from Jamaica where the idea of moral consciousness arises, is that people take a responsibility then for their history, they take a responsibility for what's going on around them, and they can relate that to the history of, of the island or, or the land 
where they live in or that they come from because they might not be living in that place anymore. Right? So I think there's, a, there, there, there's some dividing lines of where when we say, you know, what is indigenous and what is not, if, if it has to be, if we're talking about indigeneity, then, it's, then it encompasses being indigenous, but it also encompasses not being indigenous, but being aware of indigenous, right? So, but we can't confuse, you know, the, the, the struggle for rights or, or people with, with, a, with a, a much wider, wider, um, a much broader concept. Indigeneity is where people are incorporating indigenous concepts into their daily lives, right? Whether they're putting an indigenous symbol on a stamp or they're constructing a boil, but they're not affirming a heritage, a connection as being an indigenous person, right? Affirming an indigenous identity and saying, you know, I am indigenous, soy indio, soy esto, that's, that's another thing. You know, that, that, that's, that's something else where you're, you're affirming, that's a right space look, you're, you're inferring rights, right? And uh, you're, you're inferring something else that's not, that's not part of a, of, of a wider scope, right? Because there's plenty of people who make uh, things, not all of them feel the spirit of those things, but they're doing it for other reasons, right? Commercial, uh, tourism, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I would say, yeah, you know, making, using the symbols of, of uh, indigenous peoples is not the same thing as being indigenous, right? There's a, there's a difference there. Indigeneity in the Americas, the quotient in the culture of a people that grounds contemporary thought and practice in the residual and sustaining knowledge demonstrated in behaviors and transmitted orally or iconography, iconography graphically from both pre-Columbian and post-contact indigenous ancestors through the generations. Garifuna scholar Joseph Palacio defines it as indigeneity, the status of being indigenous. Max Porte admits that the term remains necessarily slippery. There is, as yet, uh, there is as of yet no consensus on its definition, but it should be distinguished from indigenousness, which can connote a static state of being, and also refers to, to people. Indi indigeneity is a concept that's applicable to things. Um, indigeneity for Forte is also used to refer to some notion of being locally rooted and that it bundles discourses and practices of the indigenous. Um, maybe I confused everybody more by that, <laughs> but that's, uh, it is a slippery term. I think we're, we're, we might be the ones to really define its uses for our purposes of indigeneity. It's not synonymous with indigenousness, but it's applicable to a definition of where things come from. I remember the first time I ever heard it was from precisely Seneca scholar John Mohawk. I had his book around here a while ago. Um, for whom uh, he said indigeneity uh, refers to the, the rooted, rootedness of a, of a thing in, in an ecosystem. Uh, uh, what well is ecosystemic, what people are using from the nature around them that feeds their lives. So, um, he would define it more from, from that context. So I, I think it's a, it's a way of, of, of uh, attaching the concept of markers to a concept that, that um, extracts us a little bit from just, again, the Indian or Indian or indigenousness uh, to a person, to, to something that can, that can travel a bit more. And so I think we can be creative with it uh, in that sense, but it, do, it does offer us a tool working definitions, you know, operational definitions. And I think they're very useful. We're not saying that we're putting this down in stone forever and this is going to be the new monument in the academy. We're saying that for the purposes of, of grappling with these issues, we have to come up with some collective operational definition that shapes this particular body of work. Then perhaps five years from now, we'll look back and say, look, that wasn't really the operational difference. But there's a transparency in how we proceed with our work, that, that the agenda is, is out there uh, more clearly, and, and that it's clarified. I, I don't have, I, I totally get what you're saying, Roberto, about like defining something that has been undefinable for very long times. But as a tool 
for working through these things, I find operational definitions very, very useful. Undoubtedly, before we're through with this project and proceed with next stages of research or whatever, those definitions are going to have to be cleaned up, shined up, discarded, whatever you know we decide they might be. But you can imagine that even us being face to face here today, that we're kind of a little bit dumbfounded with the thing because, like, how do we how do we put words to this? so that everybody walks away with the same understanding. So you can imagine what the general public is going to be hit when we try to, to tell these stories. You know, So what do we mean when we talk about indigenous Indian indigeneity? What, what I was trying to say is that what I keep hearing is, is there, it's, it's almost like we're merging these two terms as the same, when I, I don't see them as the same. And uh, I think that if, I think in this context, we're working with indigeneity. Within that indigeneity, there's there's the there's a point of reference of indigenous, right? Of people of, and, and it's not to say Indio no Indio, but there are people who are saying somos Indio, you know. So within that context of the discussion on indigeneity, that point has to be in there, right? I mean, we, we already said that we can't neg negate it. So what what I'm saying is that we should be working with a more holistic term of indigeneity allowing for the indigenous voice to rise, right? So wh what I'm saying is that that we just cannot like continue to to substitute one word for the other, like indigenous indigeneity. We should be working with indigeneity and then allow for that indigenous quotient within there to be to, to, to come out on its own or or through our help or however it comes out. Like in our trying to define a working definition, we should be as holistic, incorporating those things and more, saying, you know, this for us, coming at it from different angles, indigeneity encompasses these subjects and possibly more. And, and that would allow there for their, you know, continued cultural practices, uh, the revision or, or newly um, created, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, I just feel that within this group, it needs a holistic, a more holistic. In the 1920s, I believe, uh, a bit later to 1930s, uh, in the context of the American occupation that lasted very long time in Haiti, much longer than in most of the other uh, countries of Latin America that were under the big stick, uh, 19 years then, from 15 to 34, uh, in the movement of resistance to that, there was the armed movement of the CACO, and then there was a movement that developed in the cities, uh, particularly around the young people, in the intellectuals, the poets, the artists. Uh, that was uh, uh, indigen indigeneity. And uh, the, they published uh, their, an excellent uh, Bulletin that was called uh, La Revue Indigène, the Indigenous uh, Review. And it was of scholarly articles, but also poetry, novels, and it was a whole movement. And it was very much linked to a progressive outlook on uh, where our country should be headed. So, um, I think that indigeneity is something that is indeed at the difference with the difference of indigenous. Indigeneity is a movement. It's an outlook. It's a construction. And it's, this returns us to what Jose was saying earlier, before lunch, talking about rooted in the land and in the ecosystem, which is not necessarily this land where I'm standing, but which can be our planet Earth, our living Earth, and in which we can all construct community. So that's why the Revue Indigène was by no means a closed movement. It was in fact much more progressive than Negritude that followed it. The indigenous movement, the indigeneity movement in Haiti at those years was open on Europe, everything that was going on, had comments on the world <coughs> war that was coming up, was, uh, but also everything Haitian, everything the peasantry was going through, 
and, uh, and, and also surrealism, all of that. So that's why I offer that in um, for thought. I don't know to what extent, but I do believe that this indigenous indigeneity movement was uh, not restricted to Haiti. But uh, we could look at it. How indeed it would be a movement if we could consider it in that sense. Uh, again, talking about definitions. When I started writing about uh, our people in the Caribbean, and uh, um, using indigenous, that was the word that was used. Then. Um, and people telling me, saying, uh, like, uh, black people, descendants of slaves, we are also indigenous to the Caribbean. Uh, it isn't only the people who are of Indian heritage. Um, so, and that's the point. Uh, yeah, because if you look at the dictionary meaning of indigenous, uh, is um, rooted uh, in a particular area. All right, so I felt that indigenous was not appropriate then, if you're talking about um, people who were in a particular area long ahead of uh, European invasion. So I turned to the word aboriginal, which is also used. Uh, the, the good thing about aboriginal is that it isn't used as much in the Caribbean as indigenous is. Uh, but the fact is that um, Aboriginal is a little cumbersome, uh, not easy, and it has the same problems as, as Indigenous. So um, recently in this um, little piece that um, Jose uh, was citing me, uh, there has been the term indigeneity, uh, which I regard as a state of being Indigenous. But it's a little bit wider than that, and I would agree with um, with um, the other Joe um, on the fact that here we are talking about the state of being indigenous. It is the wider impression of uh, indigenous, which is not captured in, in indigenous by itself. And also, and, it's, and this is quite appropriate, what I'm going to say now is quite appropriate for the discussion right now, you could also de-indigenize as well as re-indigenize. Mm -hmm. So um, in a way, uh, indigeneity allows, there's a certain amount of flexibility and freedom in the use of that term. And starting with the state of being indigenous and then carrying it on to the implications and the wider impressions that arise from being indigenous. But I do want to emphasize again that um, in this particular paper that I wrote, I wrote quite a bit about the de-indigenization of the Garifuna. And this is where the, the government takes your land and does other things to you to take away your sense of being an indigenous nation. The fact that the Garifuna are indigenous right, is, is a result of their interaction, <laughs> whether biological, cultural, et cetera, of the aboriginal people of the, who were there before the arrival of Columbus, right? Because otherwise, they would be considered something else, right? So th this is what I'm trying to get at, is that th there's, a, there's a root, right? The indigenous is, is a bit different in the context, and we can't go beyond, even though we're not happy, indigenous peoples, right, in quotes, are not happy with the term, right? They'd rather be acknowledged for what they call themselves, what we call ourselves. But in, in what we're talking about affects the way indigenous peoples are engaging governments when, when, as Rochelle said earlier, it's a political issue. It stems ultimately to, to, to a political issue, which is why there's an importance, because now there's a whole set of international law relating to government relations with indigenous peoples. Right? So that, that's why I wanted to just clarify that there is a difference. Right? And, and, uh, from my view uh, as, as a Taino, I would say that the, the first pact between the Haitians and the Taino when they, when they made ese, tra ese tratado, made those Haitians indigenous because of the Guaitiao ceremony, right? Because they made them part of the family, right? So, so that's like the same thing that happened with the Garifuna, 
they became Guaitia, they became family, and they, they now are indigenous. And, and they've proven such because they kept the language, they keep, the, they keep traditions going. So this is, the, this is the proof, right, that they are indigenous because of what's been going on, because they kept the Guaitia, right? So there's a difference between that and people just incorporating images and just using them, like what we see with the government and some of the other things, that, that they're using imagery in a different way, right, than, than, than what we're talking about as far as nationhood, peoplehood, uh, uh, self-determination, etc. I'm concerned that we get into this debate about real practices and you know, made-up practices. Uh, and, and that's going to be a, a delicate line that we, you're shaking your head yes, <laughs> you have these things. Please, some thoughts on that, because I, I'm just afraid that we fall into a historical trope mm -hmm. that others have used in the past to say, no, they're not Indian any longer. There's that wonderful image, I think it was National Geographic, of uh, this Shuar man coming out of the jungle of Ecuador, wearing taparraba, this glorious headdress, and walking with a briefcase that's got the computer in it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, oh my gosh, you know. Uh, uh, is he real? Is he not real? Is this a joke? Did somebody frame this up? Yeah, he's real. In the context of the 20th century, he was real. No, where do we, where do we, where do we situate ourselves in kind of this continuum, if you will, of cultural practices? Eh, cuando eh, lo que llaman ahora como neotaíno, ¿verdad? Que, que es un término, ¿verdad? Que es que, que el taíno como tal pues, consistía. En, en una sociedad con unas características políticas, eh, económicas, eh, eh, por ejemplo, el ritual de la cojoba, el areito, eh, unos dioses, que le llaman dioses, ¿verdad? Ellos le llamaban semillas, ¿verdad? Ok. Eh, y, y como tal, con una coherencia cultural. Así que la argumentación principal eh, que yo he oído, ¿verdad? Es que no hubo una continuidad de todo eso sino que, que primero pues los mataron en el siglo XVI, que eso era, que eso ya, ya como que, y que entonces no ha habido una, una continuidad de eso, sino algunas cosas que se atribuía pues que era lo menos que, 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 que había contribuido a, a, a la formación cultural de las Antillas, o sea que, que simplemente había quedado ahí en el siglo XVI. Así que ese ha sido el, el, el argumento principal que yo he oído eh, eh, ad nauseum, repetidamente, repetidamente. Así que, 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 por lo tanto, lo otro sería, ¿quién tiene derecho a decir cuando una persona se siente indígena eh, y se siente de los pies a la cabeza y, y entonces busca pues toda esa herencia, ¿quién tiene derecho a decirle a esa persona que no es indígena? Sería la otra. Eh, así que tiene que ver esa, esas dos partes, ¿verdad? Que es la identidad que tú te, te estás eh, ascribiendo a ti, más, más las prácticas culturales de, un, de lo que se consideró un todo, ¿verdad? Que se han retenido. Pues esos dos puntos, ahí yo te diría que entre medio de eso, pues, como tú has dicho, eh, eh, está como que el meollo. El, el, la indigeneidad tiene que ver con, con origen. Y, y, y lo que es in, indígeno eh, tiene una conexión con ese origen. Tiene que haber habido una continuidad a través del tiempo. Pero además tiene que tener una característica de estrecha relación a la tierra. Pero no a cualquier tierra, sino a o un pedazo particular de tierra ¿no? que está geográficamente definido. En, esta, en este caso, la región del Caribe. Creo que es eh, racista eh, poder eh, hablar de la realidad de una identidad, porque eh, hacer la política de la extrema, la ultraderecha, ¿cuál es el verdadero americano, el verdadero francés? palabra de Sarkozy, el verdadero indígena africano o haitiano, eh, una cosa de ultra, ultra eh, extreme left, uh, right, sorry, it's very bad, we cannot engage in that. This discussion or, or the idea of uh, continuity and that is, it's not uh, solely a Caribbean or Taino issue, 
there's many other comparisons of, of other peoples who have gone through a similar state. Uh, for example, the Mapuches in Chile were said by the government at one point, they existed, and then uh, during the dictatorship, everybody was Chileno, there was no more indigenous people. After the dictatorship, then all of a sudden there was 80,000 Mapuches, right? <laughs> so, you, you know, we have to look at it with, 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 a, clear, with a clear view uh, of the connections, <laughs> right? And which is why I, 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 I you know, applaud what you said, Rachel, about the, the, the politicizing of this. But in, in this context, what I want to get back to is, is that we're trying to find a concept that everybody can grab onto. And I think if we use this indigeneity, it, it encompasses everything that we want to, that we just have to define it broadly enough to fit everybody's thing because it, it, it'll have an effect <laughs> on, on, on other things in, in, in many ways. Yeah.